My name is Casey Porter. I'm a music producer. I live in Los Angeles. And I've worked with numerous artists, Latin artists, world music artists, R&B artists, rock, rock and roll artists, and um, a little of everything. Crossed a lot of Anglo artists over to the Latin market. I started out, uh, my father is an orchestrator. Uh, he, he was doing TV shows like, like Woody Woodpecker, Lassie, and all kinds of TV shows. And so I was just always around the music. He was always orchestrating, always working on writing charts. And so that, it just felt natural to me. It's really hard to say which is the best process for me. It seems like once the band has left the building, it's all, everything is like, whew, you know, we can all relax now. And, and now we can start playing with all the parts, you know, start putting the whole puzzle together. The best possible producer, in my mind, I mean, you have different kinds of producers, but I think to be a great producer, I think it helps to be able to know all, of, all the different aspects of making, making music or making a record. Kind of like a contractor making a house. You know, if, you're, if you know what the electrician needs to be doing, and the electrician says, hey, do you want me to put this here? And you know about plumbing, and you know, well, no, you don't want to do it because there could be a problem with the plumbing, because I know that the plumbing is going to have to go through there, or let's try to work around this. That's, that, I think, is a, um, a really important thing, to have these resources and these tools and this knowledge. I would hope that the opportunities that you have here are really relevant to what you'll be doing when you're out of here. Really learn how to EQ. Don't be afraid. Over EQ and see what happens. But it's better than, it's like, it's like a race car. It's like if you're running your race car at like 20 or 30 miles an hour or kilometers, you know? But the car could actually go, you know, 200. But you never got to 200. Or you don't even know what would happen at 220 because you never pushed it enough. You never pushed the compressor enough. So you really don't know what it sounds like. And I think we can't be afraid. We can't make our art too precious that we don't really experience how cool it is to really slam something with EQ or slam it with distortion, go all the way, and then pull it back. You know, it's all about what, what you, about how it feels. You know? But what have I learned from great engineers? And there's every engineer has something great to offer. Um, Roberto Gatica taught me about EQing, you know, kind of like not, not notching EQ up, but rather kind of like broader, broader scope, um, you know, brush strokes of, of EQ, you know. It's more natural. A lot of engineers are very picky about the fact that they know their craft and they don't allow for anybody else to come in. I was working with Michael Jackson and Bruce Wedeen and, and, and Michael said, he said, Bruce, can you, can you turn my vocal up? grabs the master fader and he turns the whole mix up and Michael walks over to the console and he turns the master fader back down. But Bruce's point was the vocal's fine where it is but you know, at the end of the day it, if it helps the project great but you know you do what you gotta do. No more tape. I used to use tape but um, the, we did the last kind of test when we were doing Michael Jackson's uh, the song, What More Can I Give? We were at Bernie Grunman's uh, mastering studio. We brought in the Pro Tools rig with all the tracks and everything playing live off Pro Tools, which is insane because we normally don't do that. And then we had the, uh, the, the half inch master. And we were listening, we were ABing between digital, half inch master. This is probably around 2001, I think. It's kind of like the, the end of an era for me, that moment there. And it was just kind of like, digital was just clearer. It was still punchy, but the bottom end just had more definition. And everything else was there. All the frequencies were there. And we were just kind of like saying, wow, did you design? You know, the, there were the 192s, the, uh, the IOs. And we just said, yeah, that's it, that's it. And then. Next time I, I tried to do an album with an engineer, I called up Jim Scott, who did a, the Chili Pepper records and uh, a bunch of great records, and he worked on Santana with us as well. And I said, I'm working with a band, and they wanted to do analog. What do you think? And he's like, nah, just do digital. So it's like that also kind of like, I was like, okay, it's easy.
It's easy, much easier, but it sounds good. We're not compromising at all. I think it's important to really change things up, though. That's always good because you start getting, you fall into the same old, same old thing if you're using the same one. So yeah, I have to grab, I'll grab a ukulele sometimes, or I'll try to grab different things, or, or try new software. I'll use live, Ableton Live, and just throw some loops at something, and all of a sudden you're like, yeah, this is, this is like ridiculous. Like, you know, try, and, and, and it's great because you can, there's so many loops, there's so many sounds out there, and you start throwing them in, it's like making a new soup, you know. Every artist was, was unique. Um, I mean, for me, it kind of goes back to, I think some of the greatest examples of artists um, that were complete artists are artists that communicate something, that have, that they're not just musically gifted, but they really have something to say that is greater than just getting in and performing and getting out back to their life, but rather how can they use that, that art for greater good. And Santana's like that, like he's like that. Um, Michael Jackson was very much like that. You know, you start perhaps doing whatever you're told to do. The label may say, we want you to do this, we want you to dance and do this. And, and when you're young, you kind of follow whatever the label tells you. But after a while, you start thinking like, no, I need to take more control of my life, my artistic direction. And that's where um, I think the true artistry comes in and, you know, and, and the, the mark of a great artist comes in.